perhaps not surprising. Um, it's a gross conflict of interest. And as described in her article, you know, this is um, a symptom of institutional corruption, if you like. And the problem is that when you have such gross conflicts of interest, and we know historically that the regulators, the, the drugs that get approved, you know, they're not rigorously evaluated. They're not independent. Um, uh, they they hold, withhold data on harms quite often. Uh, and they're essentially not fit for purpose. And it's highlighted in the article as well by one commentator that we have to actually treat um, such uh, until the system changes, we can't fully trust the regulator to be doing its job properly. They're not fit for purpose. And I think the other thing to add in as well, Alex, I mean, I, I've been giving lectures on this particular topic and this area of uh, pharmaceutical industry influence uh, over clinical decision making over the last few weeks. And one very senior NHS leader who came to one of my lectures was not aware. He was shocked about this specific data. For example, 86% of the funding of the MHRA in this country comes from the pharmaceutical industry. And this particular person actually is quite inf- has been quite influential, certainly in trying to encourage people to uptake the vaccine or other drugs uh, in the mainstream media and even in his own practice. And he wasn't aware of it. So I think this highlights something else, is that doctors, patients, the general population don't know what's happening and they don't even know that they don't know. I mean, there have been lots of reports lately that in the UK we are a very overdrugged country, that people are taking far too many medicines and that some of them are having extremely serious interactions with other medicines, landing a lot of elderly people especially in hospital. Now, in this report, uh, we know now that the, the pharmaceutical industry is funding the regulators, but does that, in your opinion, create a direct stream of influence from the big pharma to the regulator. Absolutely. So also what's highlighted in this really brilliant article, it's very rigorous, so people should, it's open access, you can get hold of it and read it yourself. It's shown over the years, as there's been more funding coming from the drug industry for approval of drugs, the quality of the evidence is reduced. And if you look at actually data, even going by many years, for example, of the 3,000 health interventions that are carried out in Europe, only 11% of them are thought to be truly beneficial for patients. Uh, over 150 million euros a day is wasted because of corruption in healthcare systems. And this is something that, you know, is a huge issue. It's a major issue because if you look at, and I've analyzed this myself, if you look at the impact of drugs that have been approved, say, in Europe and across the Western world over the last two to three decades, Alex, most of those drugs have been proven to be copies of old ones. And actually only a very small minority have been shown to be truly beneficial and many to be more harmful than beneficial. So what, what, how, what do we conclude from that? Well, the overall net effect of the drug industry on society, in my view, has been a negative one in the last few decades. And part of the reason for that is there's been increasing deregulation. So you go back to the uh, late 80s or early 90s, only a small proportion of the funding of the regulator came from the drug industry. Most of it was publicly funded. So where do we go from here? I think one of the key things is although drug companies, you know, should be developing drugs, they should have no role in testing them and certainly not then hiding the data. The regulators should be publicly funded. And I think until all of this changes, one of the things, and I have conversations with patients and, uh, about this all the time, and they are, they're shocked and actually, to be honest, outraged by this situation they're not aware of. I think until the situation changes, people need to understand that all drug industry-sponsored trials should be seen as marketing until proven otherwise.